Thank you all. And are you able to see also the flipping of my slides? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Flipping, you are able to see? Yes, sir. Okay. It's going for okay. So we are doing all right. So I thank Dr. Singh and the organizers uh, giving me the opportunity to speak on this conference. Um, I am associated with Brain Wave Science as their consultant uh, uh, for their uh, product uh, while I am a uh, professor at IIT Kanpur. Today I'm going to talk about revolutionary P300 forensic neurotechnology for national security. So <clears throat> uh, before I uh, start giving live, because uh, there must be audience there uh, may not be a little familiar. So I will just give a little background. Uh, you can check here that brain computer interface is, is basically uh, this system, they enable communication between brain and a device. Okay, so brain to brain direct communication, brain to uh, device communication. I had a friend, uh, Professor Kevin Warwick, he and his wife, they used to have an implanted device and they could communicate with each other through simple brain signal. And this is a technology he demonstrated long back uh, uh, around 2000, uh, um, early 2000. So if you look at <clears throat> this brain signal, the, the person who actually brought BCI into forefront is Professor Badel and his uh, uh, seminal paper 1973 towards direct brain computer communication, uh, that really brought in uh, a lot of interest in brain computer interface because uh, 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 it, it brought him, it created a possibilities to explore unknown territories. So if you look at, uh, there are many uh, brain computer uh, uh, BCI system. We have many neuroimaging system like fMRI, PET scan and so forth. But we will be limiting our discussion here to EEG uh, because this is non-invasive, very cheap, good temporal resolution. Others are not temporal. They are not temporal, right? fMRI, PET scan, you don't get any temporal information. You get special information, but not temporal. And here uh, in EEG, we can get both special as well as um, uh, temporal information. In fact, the one of the pioneer in computational neuroscience, Walter Freeman from University of Berkeley, he uh, had a seminal paper where he said that it is easy based uh, a technology that is going to make revolution in uh, neuroscience related uh, research. <clears throat> So if you look at uh, you know, the popular BCI applications, <clears throat> so what we are doing actually, so there is a you know, brain inside the skull and over the skull, we are placing all these electrodes, right? And we are collecting some signals. And we using these signals, what kind of applications we have done, right? We can using, uh, the brain signal, we can control a robot, we can control a prosthetics, we can make a person who, who cannot speak, but we can collect his uh, brain wave and can understand what he is speaking, speller, right? Gaming, uh, like many uh, disabled people, they need some kind of engagements. So how do you engage them? Uh, so using a simple brain signal, if we can create an user interface with the gaming devices and other wave surfing and so many other things, uh, we can always engage them. We can also use brain computer interface uh, interactive within a virtual reality. And, and there are <clears throat> myriads of applications that we do. In my lab, uh, 
we work a lot in brain wave control wheelchair we are about to complete a, a, a prototype and soon we'll demonstrate a brain wave control wheelchair in a very uh, low cost it's a very low cost device where a p300 plus motor imagery i'm going to explain what is p300 motor imagery uh, we have combined in a multimodal approach we are uh, designing this uh, we have designed this wheelchair we also work on easy based driver drowsiness detection a driver <coughs> uh, wears a uh, eeg head cap <coughs> and then uh, based on its reaction time suppose there is a bump uh, how well it is uh, it is uh, correcting you know uh, its reaction time uh, to see the bump to see the other vehicles which are coming so based on reaction time uh, we could easily monitor uh whether the person is drowsy or not drowsy and uh, with brain wave science uh, we are working on concealed information detection uh <clears throat> which uh, is the main topic of this uh, presentation so a uh, little uh, you see that what is uh, brain brain is mind in action whatever you think <clears throat> everything has its own shadow in brain signal so there are varieties of brain signals one of these is eeg and this eeg signal it has so many things you can you know if you know different studies you get you know depending on what kind of application you are looking at uh you will get different kind of signals within it so it's like you know it's a it's a huge ocean and within that ocean you have to search out what you are looking for so this is the Uh, a challenging aspect of a brain signal because it is like a ocean is it has so many things you know for example if i'm sitting even if i'm not doing anything i may i may be thinking i may be imagining i may be uh, you know thinking about my future so many things are happening and you know and memories are popping up and there are certain bodily problem that is creating so many uh, uh, reaction and all those signals are being collected now the point is that when we apply the signal to certain application we have to be very careful and moreover you see that we are placing all these electrodes on the skull so there are varieties of sources of noise right but the good part of eeg is that with the current trend in open uh, bci set it has become very cheap technology right so, uh <clears throat> within uh 3 4 lakh you get a very high quality uh open uh, bci set earlier you know for example in my lab i have 128 channel uh gtech uh, uh eeg device uh, which costs almost like 80 lakh to 1 crore rupees but you don't need such high uh, profile uh eeg device simple open a bci headset uh, can help me to uh, develop very good uh, products so so and uh, you see that you go through any other neuroimaging technique fmri it's in crores pet scan in crores so it is not uh, very easy to develop a very customized device so that is why we talk and uh, because of its temporal content it is highly cognitive in terms of its information content okay <clears throat> so if you look at uh, bci paradigm uh, we have uh, first is motor imagery and motor imagery you all of you know that uh, in our brain uh, there are varieties of neurons uh, and one of those neurons are motor neurons motor neuron means uh, once the information processing is done the decision to actuate your hand actuate your leg actuate your eye movement leap movement is all done in motor cortex so there are billions of motor neurons and uh, so suppose we train for example those who are patients like uh, uh, stroke patients uh, paralyzed patients motor neuron patient like you know steve hawking was a motor neuron patient 
So uh, they literally they don't have any motor neurons uh, uh, alive, uh, dead. Particularly, Steve Hawking had literally almost all motor neurons were dead except a few that could uh, move his lips. And using that lip movement, uh, IBM could uh, create a synthetic speech for Steve Hawking, and people could not recognize that it is a synthetic speaker, speaker or it is really Steve Hawking speaking. So this is the technology, power of technology, and this is what we want to do. So in motor imagery, we, we do binary kind of thinking. That means we make a subject to, to think left-hand movement or right-hand movement, left-hand uh, lifting, right-hand lifting, left leg uh, lifting, right leg lifting. So in that way, the motor neurons, they get actuated and you get some signals. And that way, uh, we synchronize these uh, left and right uh, hand lifting or leg lifting to some of the, some of the user interface. That means uh, you make a person to sit in a uh, wheelchair and make him think to go forward, or backward, or left, right, right turn, left turn. So all this possible using simply this binary uh, thing. And you can see here uh, <clears throat> the electrodes that are of interest are C3, C4, CZ. Uh, so these are the things that uh, I'm going to even uh, discuss a little more. Uh, the <clears throat> similarly event-related potential IRP, which is P300. This exploits the idea of presenting rare target stimulus in between a relevant model. What is meaning of that? Suppose, you know, I have a very bad memory of, suppose I was molested when I was a child, right? So obviously, when some, 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 some such uh, uh, scenario is presented to me, like, you know, is through emails, uh, through uh, words, voice, immediately, because I'm a victim immediately, my event-related potential will peak. And this is called uh, P300, okay? And this is what is the subject of my topic today. I'm going to, so you can see here in this uh, uh, brain thing, so this is a central uh, nervous uh, system area. This is where motor imagery, uh, we signal, we collect. And then the, some the parietal uh, lobe, uh, you have P3, P4, PZ. So this is the, uh, P300 uh, signal we collect from here. And then for evoked potential SSBEP, steady state visually evoked potential, this is the third one. And we collect from the occipital lobe. Uh, so where we take mostly O1, O2, OZ. So these are the, so basically we have to realize uh, where, what kind of uh, signals are being uh, 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 actuated uh, given different stimuli and that signal we have to extract or we have to collect from the brain and we have to develop our product. So this is, and it is not only that we have P300, motor imagery, SSBEP. No, if you do more research, you may find uh, uh, more uh, uh, of the uh, such uh, insight into the content in the brain signal. As I told you, brain signal is like ocean ocean and how to collect relevant information is an art that we have to master. Uh, see, in, uh, in criminal investigation, uh, you know, people use this polygraphy test where you give some control question, um, some questionnaire, and then you uh, look at changes in blood pressure, pulse, respiration, skin conductivity, because if somebody is involved in a crime scene, obviously you expect his blood pressure, pulse, respiration, skin conductivity, there will be changes in that. And you create a classifier based on that and say whether this person is guilty or not. But the problem in polygraphy is that even innocents, out of fear, they get uh, false signals. They give false positives. And that is the great. And you can look at this. Uh, um, uh, do polygraphs tell the truth? This is uh, the link where you can get uh, 
varieties of angles by which polygraph tests uh, can go faulty. So obviously, we are looking for something that is more robust. And that robust thing is actually, um, uh, we, have to, we, have, we have to make use of brain signal. As I told you, what I am is all concealed within my brain signal. There should be no doubt about it. What I am is concealed within the brain signal. So this particular area gives us or provides us enormous opportunity to create different products for different applications. And today I'm going to focus on uh, uh, the P300. So P300 wave is an event-related potential component uh, in the EEG uh, electroencephalogram uh, elicited upon presentation of a visual stimulus and is associated with recognition. Particularly when you give any visual, uh, uh, for example, you know somebody has a has done a crime, and it is very easy because uh, in other polygraph or other test, you want to make the person to either uh, give consent, agree. Here, you don't have to do anything. If the person has done some uh, crime, his uh, uh, P300 uh, event-related potential would result in a peak. And you look at that peak, you don't, you know, we, we have done a lot of tests in our laboratory uh, on different subjects. Uh, and we have seen that it really, you know, with 99% accuracy, with 99% accuracy, always, you know, uh, you can always tell uh, what is what is in the mind of the person. Okay, so so this is a P300 based test that conducted using audible paradigm. What is meaning of audible paradigm? Frequent presentation of repetitive stimuli, which are infrequently interrupted by deviant stimuli. And these deviant stimuli are normally the probe. You are looking for, uh, uh, you are looking for some evidence. Uh, that evidence would prove that this person is, is involved uh, in, a, in, a, in, a, um, in a criminal act. So P300 has been used in various applications, prosthetic spellers, concealed information test, uh, in fact, uh, in our wheelchair, we are using P300 uh, for a person, and uh, he wants to go and switch on his TV. Uh, he has to go and switch on his water tap or switch off the lights. Um, you know, all those things also, we are able to use P300 very efficiently and effectively. Uh, in this test, subject is presented with three different kind of stimuli, probe, irrelevant, and target, right? The rare probe trial presented the suspected concealed information items that guilty suspects would deny recognizing so as to deny their involvement in the crime. A modern weapon such as a knife is an example of a probe, right? Suppose police has already found out the knife so obviously that person who has used that knife, only, only he will have P300 getting pick. Others won't. Because given a crime, everybody, so many people have heard, there may be people who are witness to it, right? But the person who has committed the crime, we would like to pinpoint him. Uh, the frequent irrelevant items were items of the same time as the probe. Like instead of a modern weapon, a modern knife, you saw a weapon, uh, sorry, pistol or, 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 a, or, a, or a bat or something, you know, by which one can, uh, uh, can be involved in that crime scene. So, <clears throat> so these irrelevant are not relevant to the crime under investigation and therefore should not be recognized by the guilty suspect, right? So, only the guilty person would recognize the probes and respond to that with a uh, peak. I will explain that to you uh, with a P300. And there is a difference between ERPs 
in pro versus relevant trial for guilty subjects, but not for innocent subjects. So normally in polygraph test, an innocent may also be trapped. But in this case, innocent will not be trapped. So they, so you can look at here um, in a, in a, in a uh, P300, uh, we use uh, in brainwave science, uh, the, the system that uh, the brainwave science has developed for uh, the eye cognitive system is uh, P3, PZ, P4, PCZ. So the beauty is that only using four channels. Normally in research, what happens? We use 64 channel, 128 channel, 256 channel to increase our uh, accuracy. So when you want to take a product to the market, uh, we cannot get, you know, we cannot have 64 channel, 128 channel, because then it will be cumbersome for the investigating agency to handle such huge channels. So the, 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 the idea here is that how can we, uh, you know, reduce this channel to minimum and, and plus, while we reduce the minimal, we don't lose any information. That means our accuracy is not compromised. So this is the challenge. And this is what is the technology uh, that uh, brainwave science says. It uses gold cup electrodes, 1020 conductive pest, electrode cap gel. And uh, it is just very easy. Uh, you know, you don't have to have a lot of, uh, um, you know, hard work to be done as you put on this, uh, uh, easy cap on the uh, suspected subjects and uh, collect uh, the data. So what you are seeing here, uh, you see that uh, there are, uh, uh, you know, images that can be probe or, uh, or target, and then those are irrelevant, can be provided to the, uh, to the subject from time to time, and there is a specific um, gap. You can see that 400 millisecond, and then for 800 millisecond, we don't do anything. And for 1000 millisecond, we give an irrelevant uh, uh, objects. And then again, 800 millisecond, we don't do anything. So, so there is a sequence, uh, you know, when we collect data, there is a sequence. So you can see that if there is a probe, actual probe, then you, Suppose this is a probe, and then you will have an evoked potential, um, event-related potential uh, that will peak here. Uh, if this is a probe, then again, another uh, peak would occur. Otherwise, the others, they won't have uh, peak. They will have, uh, you know, the random signals. The average, uh, they would average out to um, some kind of uh, null. So this is a, this is a, a typical, uh, uh, P300 signal. So, uh, uh, the special resolution, we are using only four uh, uh, channel, um, but uh, if you want more, we can use more electrode, but then that would uh, make uh, the product cost more. So, those are issues that we have to tackle. Uh, so, uh, experimental paradigm flexibility, state of art here to detection algorithm, single target classification for smaller detection time. So these are uh, uh, these are some of the features of this product. What you see here, single target classification. That means uh, uh, normally in machine learning, uh, you have to uh, so when I'm given a subject, uh, you have to. Uh, you know, go through many trials before you can uh, conclude. But uh, the the algorithm that has been developed in brain of science product uh, I cognitive is that uh, even single probe uh, you saw uh, or you exhibit in front of this suspected subject, uh, the you can make an estimate immediately after the probe whether the person uh, is. Uh, uh, is guilty uh, or uh, he is not guilty. So, and the detection algorithm that we are using, we are using machine learning techniques. I will explain, I'll give you a 
sample of machine learning algorithm that we use. And uh, of course, we are interested as quickly uh, we detect whether the person is uh, uh, guilty or not. So if you look at the uh, technology, the software uh, uh, para, you know, uh, the uh, pipeline, so you see there is a visual scene and uh, that is comes as a stimulus. And then you have the signals, uh, the, the brain gets activated, you collect those data, and then you have to do pre-processing. Why pre-processing? You have to recognize, as I told you, uh, the or signals, uh, brain signal is a, is, a, is a ocean. It has so many information within it. And plus we are collecting over a skull. So a lot of noise and we don't know the, uh, the, uh, the source of these noise. That is another big issue in BCIE research. Um, we have done a lot of research in pre-processing. We have used quantum neural network, recurrent quantum neural network, to filter uh, a, a signal um, using the concept of probability, uh, time varying probability density function. And then again, you can use either a neural network or statistical methods to uh, extract uh, uh, feature extraction, uh, to extract features, that is uh, after pre-processing. And then the classifier. Classifier again can be a neural network uh, most of the time we use because given the uh, the advanced uh, uh, advances that has happened uh, recently uh, in deep learning uh, methodology. So we can use very, very uh, highly sophisticated algorithm. And finally, we get the result, right? Thank you. Ah. Thank you, Dr. Lakshmidhar. Yes. I, I hope you have finished. No, yes. no, no. I'm not finished. Uh, I was told I will speak in for, for 45 minutes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think uh, we have given you sufficient time. Please go ahead, but keep track on the time. I okay. see a series of speakers. Okay. Yeah, please please uh, go ahead. Okay, sir. Ahead. Yeah. So you see that uh, 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 the, the brainwave. Uh, science product that we have uh, uh, developed in which you can see that um, this this particular technology is very easy to uh, easy to operate uh, you place the uh, mount the headset and then uh, display crime related images or words and phrases collect the subject's brain response and then uh, it all everything happens in the onboard computer there uh, where it is analyzed. And finally, you see whether there is a peak, uh, event-related peak or not. If there is a peak, then you say he is guilty. If it's not peak, he's not guilty. A high-level informant produced photographs containing a pickup truck with explosive device concealed in it relating to a possible attack on two of the most prominent government buildings, the Parliament of India and the India Gate. Upon further investigating, the intelligence agency identified one individual suspect who may be involved in the plot. An eye cognitive test was conducted to determine their involvement in this. After the test concluded the information to be present in his brain, further interrogation by the officials led to the suspect confessing about the whole plot. So this is one of the success stories of the, uh, the product that... Uh has been developed uh, in brain science, brainwave science. And uh, so you can see now here. Now we will enter the information uh, to be tested into how the system. This, uh, device really this can works. be either text or images. Just browse to your file, select you image and click open to add it into the system. Proceed similarly to add all other information about the case. Now we will create sets to test on the subject. Just click Generate Sets and Save Sets. Now you are ready to conduct the eye cognitive test on your subject. Proceed to securely put on the EEG headset on the subject. Place the second stimulus display screen in front of the subject. The examiner must be sitting behind the subject in a quiet, secluded testing room. Now we will conduct the eye cognitive test. 
Just click Conduct Test against the selected set. Click Stimulus Screen and then Start Test to begin the eye cognitive test. Once the test begins, you will see here the current image being presented. Below that, you will see the real-time analysis that is whether the P300 is present or absent for the current image along with the accuracy score. Below that, you can see the test progress. The graphs on the left represent the current ERP response from the subject. So you can see that how very easy to handle and a very portable device, um, uh, this uh, device. I'm now going to technical details. Now we will bit. enter the information to be tested into the system. Uh, so the some of the machine learning approach that we use uh, to develop this technology, I will just give you a little bit of uh, what we do, uh, what kind of technology we incorporate in the system. You can see, uh, the neural networks have been used since, uh, uh, you know, uh, mid 90s, uh, mid 20th century onwards. And there is a lot of uh, innovation and currently the deep learning network. So what we are using, because you see, this is a temporal signal. Because it is a temporal signal, we need to use neural network that has temporal feature. That means uh, neural network that can have uh, long-term memory, short-term memory, right? So normally a dynamic network is a network that can memorize and a static network that cannot have memory. So this is how we look at technology as a science perspective. So you can <clears throat> look at your uh, recurrent neural network. Uh, so <clears throat> recurrent neural network means uh, it remembers its previous state, okay? It remembers. And if you increase the order of the memory, it can remember its uh, previous uh, previous uh, state, previous to previous to previous step. So how many previous steps can remember accordingly the order of the neural network, temporal order of the network uh, is decided. And uh, <clears throat> the normal, uh, this kind of network, what happens is that there is a vanishing gradient problem. When you train, uh, because these are all very uh, deep layers. So when you bring the error from the uh, output target towards the uh, input layer, uh, the, the, the errors, they decay. So the, the weights and the initial layers are unaffected. So there is no training. So given that, what we have used uh, a variant of uh, innovation in long and short-term memory network and what is this long and short-term memory network? That means uh, this network has been designed where you can allow this network to, uh, to capture some of the important features, temporal features, uh, both in terms of uh, long-term as well as short-term. Just, I don't want to tell the mathematics. So there are, you know, forget gate, there are, you know, there are different gates we introduce in this, uh, um, in this, just you can see that there is a self state, forget get, input get, new input, output get, output. So these are all uh, details of the technology. <clears throat> so these uh, drawbacks in LSTM, uh, there is a longer training time, high memory requirement, easy to overfit, sensitive to different random weight initialization, require large amount of data to train. So these are the things that we wanted to avoid. So what we have done, we have generated a higher order gated recurrent neural network, right? So, so which feeds back not just one, but more number of previous states. So this is uh, 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 the, uh, and we can have first order recurrent unit, second order recurrent unit, and I have told you order means uh, how many previous, Second order recurrent unit means you will have a better model, but then more computation. So we have to do uh, a kind of uh, uh, a kind of uh, um, optimization uh, as far as uh, how we choose this. Uh, uh, so <clears throat> uh, <clears throat> uh, 
so this is a little of uh, uh, mathematics. Uh, 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 what what we are talking here is uh, that uh, the connection weights are not just the same at every time step, but different nonlinear time gets at kth previous time steps instead. So this is a <clears throat> uh, uh, little mathematical in the in the terms that uh, the the response ht is the hidden state at time t is the uh, and where xt is the current input g From there, you get probe, trial, target trial, level network. Uh, we create another category of feature. And all these features are concatenated and then are fused. And then we put those features. So basically, you try to understand because, as I told you, these brain signals, there are different contents are there. Okay. And I am looking for a specific content. Can I figure that one? And that is why. So you see that there are three different levels of features that have been taken and based on our own intuition, our own idea of how uh, if somebody has a, a really evoked uh, event-related potential, then how that should uh, can be uh, extracted. So using that, you uh, collect all those features, fuse them, and then put in a fit forward neural network class. So this is the, uh, this is the <clears throat> technique that we have used that gave us 99% uh, accuracy. This is the cost function. And uh, <clears throat> so, so region specific HR network, the easy signal recorded fall into three specific region, frontal FP2, central CZ, parietal P3, PZ, P4, respect P. Region specific higher order gated recurrent were trained for each of these regions. The feature representation learned from specific regions are fed to a binary and an, and an classifier. And similarly, five channel uh, PTI with HR uh, higher order recurrent network, all the waveform obtained from five EEG channels are concatenated and the so called vector is used to train HR, HOR network. And conjoint region specific HR. Region specific HR networks are trained as mentioned above. The so uh, obtained representation are combined together for binary classification. I had already explained. So, this is in details, is there. So, <clears throat> you can see here if you use different kind of uh, region, uh, then you have different kind of accuracy. Um, like, you know, parietal regions, you have 93 to 94%. Uh, uh, accuracy 5C HOR 95.6 uh, to 96.5 plus or minus that is the accuracy and CRS HOR is 96 uh, to 99. Uh, because, you see, for the, the first one is first order and second one is the second order uh, uh, network. So, so basically, <clears throat> what I presented to you that using uh, P300. Uh, we have been able to develop a technology that really works uh, um, on many uh, on, on the real um, uh, field. Uh, it's a good paradigm to know the internal state and intention of a person. Uh, it can be used for various tasks such as guilty, innocent classification, healthcare applications, so many other things. Efficient machine learning algorithms are needed for better classification accuracy. Given the importance of uh, national security, uh, collaborative research between academia, government agencies, and industries should be the way forward. So this is uh, uh, the, my presentation. I just exactly took 45 minutes. Uh, thank you very much for your attention.